it's been uh, day two after escaping and the tank is ready for planting i filled it up with water i added a heater and uh, the, the temperature is um, acceptable for the plants it's at about 25 degrees celsius i've added two canister filters actually one is uh, from a tank where we have all our fish in order to cycle this tank so it has all the uh, cycled mature media in in, in it and uh, essentially it will work on this tank for for a day for about a day and uh, the tank will get cycled the second filter is actually a fresh one so it hasn't been cycled it just to remove all sort of impurities and uh, uh, both of them have no biological media just mechanical media because essentially i just want to uh, remove all the impurities and uh, later on i would also keep them as uh, mechanical filters because there will be a lot of plants a lot of riparian plants which will do all the biological filtration so you can see that this uh, driftwood work uh, is quite a mess and uh, I hope I, I made it look as natural as possible and I uh, probably the camera doesn't do it justice because it does look more natural in reality. Uh, both outflow pipes of uh, canister filters, uh, that's a hymen, that's fluval, they're there in the back so my goal was basically to hide all the filtration, all the equipment and the heater is also in the back, you can't see it and uh, they create a sort of a flow here which goes around here and which creates this sort of a nice uh, uh, water flow effect uh, the other part of the tank over there it's uh, kind of a quiet and still which provides a, not a lot of space for fish that do not like high flow uh, what else so yeah and i've added a black background to this part of the tank in order to create this kind of a coastal area effect it's it's not transparent it doesn't look uh, the same way it looks there which has sort of a dimension of depth and uh, dimension of distance but over here it looks like uh, there's basically just a black background behind all of this along with planting i will finish the scaping i will add kind of a finer and more specific details of the of the scape i will for example add more botanicals these are some of the palm uh, bunches of palm brushes which I bought from uh, Blackwater UK a company specializing in all sort of uh, botanicals uh, for uh, Blackwater setups and uh, they will hopefully look great so this is a natural product it's uh, from uh, Brazil I think uh, over here I got cocoa uh, nut or cocoa shell whatever you call it uh, it has a hole in here I uh, don't know whether this is going to uh, sink or it's going to float forever. We are going to see about that. It's, uh, it looks great and it smells great from inside. Uh, I'm sure fish won't care about it. So we'll start with aquatic plants. Actually in here I have a co collection of everything. This is a dwarf such. This is some tro tropical floating plants. Uh, Salvinia, uh, frogbeet. Uh, this is actually Miriaphilum or Matogrosense. Uh, not sure whether I'm going to use uh, this for uh, this particular tank or uh, the other tanks which I will have uh, escaped quite soon and the dwarf such is unfortunately not doing well because I have kept them in this condition for quite a while and they definitely need to be released so let's open up this container and let's take out some of the plants we are going to use in the scape so we have here ooh okay that's a problem i have here some sort of explosion of bugs which have eaten all my echinodorus so we had a bit of a disaster with my echinodorus uh, polyfolius uh, and argentinensis i've added them to this uh, plant farm and i didn't know that i have here a colony of this uh, shellless uh, snails or some sort of a slugs or whatever they are and they've made a really short work of all this echinodorus leaves which apparently were too delicious for them so now my echinodorus looks really miserable to put it that way but as the case is with the Kinodorus plants, uh, what matters is uh, the, the roots, uh, kind of uh, this system down here, because um, most of the time, Kinodorus will simply 
lose most of its leaves in a new place in a new setup so yeah probably we'll just have to wait for it to get adapted to this new environment and I'll clean it up and I'll get it planted <music> repairing plants and uh, I'll start with this fern uh, I will start by washing its roots in warm water to remove as much soil as possible because we don't want too much soil so the goal is to remove as much soil as possible uh, with ferns, uh, one thing I learned is that uh, they will never grow if you will plant them with uh, all of their roots covered by water. So I'm going to use this uh, kind of a polystyrene floss as a planting medium. So I plan to actually plant it somewhere here, so it will be a bit of a centerpiece. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of this floss. It's actually from an old pillow, but that's the same material as filter floss to just wrap its roots around and provide it with some sort of a growing medium I will cover it with some tree bark in a moment but this is what it's going to look like at the moment this is to prevent its roots being uh, kind of a fully submerged there will be a bit of a challenge to settle it in a position but uh, I want to have it somewhere in here maybe yeah something like that the floss will also kind of uh, keep the roots moist uh, which is what we want to achieve here potentially This is basically a tree bark, which I will try to use to cover the filter floss as it doesn't obviously look very natural. How successful am I going to be is a big question, but I'm going to do my best. <music>
this is anthurium and uh, I'm planning to add it somewhere in the back it actually can grow with its roots and water so there is no need to wrap it into anything and there is no need to kind of uh, elevate it so it's going to be absolutely fine growing with its roots in water So we can say that planting is uh, finished uh, well scaping is not yet complete because I will still be adding some more finer details uh, more botanical branches uh, tree branches and uh, driftwood pieces in this area to kind of um, add um, more structure to it but in terms of plants this is where we at dwarf such looking good uh, Echinodorus looking miserable, but for now, hopefully, uh, the fern is here. There are some patches of uh, uh, Brazilian moss which I had growing um, uh, immersed in um, in a plastic container. I moved them in here. I added some Amazon frog beet and some and some Hydrocotyl leucephala on top, hoping that it will kind of colonize this area. Anturium is here. Uh, Calatia is here. I, I used these bamboo sticks to actually put it in place because it was just not holding uh, the way I wanted to hold. Yeah, so uh, Ficus pumila creeping fig is uh, positioned on this piece of bogwood and hopefully it will start uh, kind of a 
growing around it. I have here one um, a bromelia. Uh, I think it's a red flame bromelia or something of that kind. And uh, potos in the back here. In the back, actually, potos looks quite great uh, next to echinodorus because they have similarly kind of a structured leaf cells. So. Uh, hopefully if uh, Echinodorus grows well, and uh, I know Potos will grow well, uh, they will look great uh, in this corner. As you can see, I have already added some leaf litter. These are jackfruit leaves. I just uh, dropped them in here and uh, they are going to float on the surface like this uh, for a day or two before they will sink. I don't boil my leaf litter, I don't treat it in any other way, I just want it to release all the tannins. I also added some rooibos tea in order to get this black water effect. It's not really black water yet, but it's already blackish, so I will be adding more um, more rooibos tea and uh, more botanicals, which will also release uh, some um, tannins so that's that's how it looks for now i still have some plants which i haven't used which is uh, uh, some salvinia which i will probably use in a different tank and uh, miriophyllum matograsense which i'm also ho hoping to use on a different tank um, unheated tank because both of these will grow well in unheated tank in terms of the botanicals uh, that i've added yesterday uh, the palm uh, the palm branches, I've added one in here and one over there in the back. I don't think uh, you can see this it. kind of uh, back there. They actually look amazing. I've never used that botanical before, but uh, when uh, they are dry, they kind of uh, pale brown, but underwater they become this kind of a deeper brown color and uh, they look very natural. They are actually natural, so they will be a perfect ground. Uh, for fish uh, to hide and to breed. I know Caridoras love these things and also Caracins, uh, Tetras love these things to lay their eggs in. Uh, the cocoa pot um, is not yet sinking, it's somewhere up there. Yeah, so that's where we are at at this stage and I will let the, the tank cycle for a day. I will let all the plants to settle down before adding fish from our temporary holding tank in here it would be actually great to get them moved uh, from here i'll turn on lights so you could see the fish in here and uh, yeah they've been living in here for almost a month and uh, it's time to get them moved to a proper tank and there's much more fish to come actually i haven't shown show you this small fish room which i'm creating in this storage space but uh, there are a few quarantine tanks with some new fish and uh, there, that will be a topic for a separate video